Okay. So like I promised, I am definitely going to do uh, some more live demo, um, mostly live demo, in fact, but let me just show you a few slides to kind of set the context again for you. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And um, what we are talking about here today is we are talking about GitOps at scale. So earlier when I talked about Weave GitOps, you saw from an application developer perspective that I was able to take two clusters that I had and I was able to apply GitOps to those clusters and then apply GitOps to the applications, thereby linking the applications to the clusters. Now you can imagine when I have lots of different teams and I have lots of applications that doing what I did kind of manually against these different repositories and these different uh, clusters can get a little unwieldy. And so we wanna be able to do that at scale. Furthermore, when I talked earlier, I, I made mention of the fact that very, very early on, first thing this morning, I talked about the fact that what we don't wanna do is we don't wanna give unfettered access to infrastructure. So Kubernetes represents infrastructure in many cases to application teams that instead we need the platform teams to control that access. So controlling access, giving that self-service API to the developers and being able to manage things at scale are all concerns that the platform team has. And that's what I wanna talk about here today. So again, earlier today, we talked about the application DevOps and what they're responsible for. Oh, that's perfect timing. You, you all can maybe hear the, uh, uh, the car alarm. Um, and then the platform team, of course, is responsible for supporting that application developer, um, but at the same time, maintaining the enterprise controls. So that's what we wanna talk about now is empowering that um, platform team. So I'm gonna jump into the demo, but let me show you one more picture to show you what it is I'm going to demo. I am gonna demo WKP, Weave Kubernetes Platform. This is our product that's been shipping now for over a year. Um, and each one of these clusters, and particularly the management cluster, and you'll see in a moment a multi-tenant cluster that I'm gonna create, are Kubernetes clusters that are of the flavor WKP. And I'll show you how we turn a vanilla Kubernetes cluster into a WKP cluster in just a moment. But I have a management cluster, which is going to allow me to manage across a whole bunch of different clusters, different Kubernetes clusters. Some of those clusters might be single tenant clusters. Some of those clusters might be multi-tenant clusters. There is not one answer. Both of these things, there's use cases that are supported by each one of these different scenarios. So one thing that the platform engineer needs to do is they need to be able to manage across those clusters, make sure that, for example, old versions of Kubernetes clusters aren't being left lying around because those can represent a security challenge. Um, they are perhaps going to want to be able to apply policies uniformly across all of those different clusters. And so that's where we use a management cluster to get a view and a control plane across all of these different clusters. Then the application developer might have access to some of these single tenant clusters, but the application developer, again, doesn't, you shouldn't give them access, full under, unfettered access to those single tenant clusters. The platform engineer is serving up these single tenant clusters with certain policies applied so that when the application developer gets that capacity, it's already in a safe and secure environment. Remember what I talked about earlier, it's self-service operations, not self-service infrastructure. And then finally, if there's a multi-tenant cluster, then the platform engineer may also have something to say about the way that that cluster is parceled out into various application teams, um, into this multi-tenant, in, into the various tenants that we have there. So what I'm gonna show you is a management cluster we're going to show how we're going to turn another cluster into a uh, WKP cluster and what that effect is. And then that WKP cluster, we are going to further break it down into multiple tenants. So that's the flow of what I'm going to show you here today. So for this demo, I'm going to start out in WKP. 
This here is the console for the management cluster. So remember the cluster on the left hand side. That management cluster is a Kubernetes cluster that has had WKP installed on it. That WKP installs a number of components. So you can see here a host of observability components. You can also see that it has GitOps components. In the previous demo, I talked about the GitOps runtime. Yep. This is installed a GitOps runtime that allows you then to apply GitOps not only to the application workloads, but to the cluster itself. So this is the management cluster. Now that one of the components that's available in this management cluster is reflected up here in this clusters tab. So if I come over into the clusters tab, you can see that I have a whole host of different clusters that are being that we can use the WKP management cluster to observe. So you can see here that I have a development cluster and a prod cluster. One of them is running version 1.21 and another is running version 1.19. So not too surprising, sometimes the prod clusters lag behind the uh, development clusters. I also have a WKP workload cluster here that uh, is running version 1.2.21. 1.20, notice that it also has this column called team workspaces. For the non-WKP clusters, this is not an abstraction that's available. Team workspaces is something that's available for WKP clusters. And in fact, I'm going to show you how we first of all create a WKP cluster and then how we enable team workspaces against that. And then finally, you can see here that these two clusters are EKS clusters. And this one up here, I can tell you is a kind cluster. So it's not one of the cloud service provider clusters. Oh, you'll also notice for the WKP cluster on the far right, I have a link to a Git repo. Again, I'll show you that live when we register a cluster. So the other thing that I wanna show you is over here in my command prompt, I have a brand new EKS cluster up and running. So let me just clear my dialogue there. I have a brand new EKS cluster up and running. It's just an EKS vanilla cluster, not a WKP cluster yet. Um, and the first thing I'm gonna do before I even turn this into a WKP cluster is I'm gonna register it into my management cluster. And the way that I do that coming back over here is you can see that there's a connect a cluster button. I'm gonna connect the cluster and I'm gonna call this uh, my WKP, I'll call it Cornelia. Cornelia WKP um, workload cluster. Okay. And on the next screen, it's going to show me a kubectl command that I should apply to that cluster. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And I'm going to come back over into my command prompt and I'm going to apply that cluster. So what this is doing, what you can see here, is that it is deploying an agent onto that cluster. That cluster is still not a WKP cluster, but it's installing an agent on that cluster, which acts as the bridge from that cluster into the multi-cluster control plane. That's what I'm showing you in the management cluster. So now when I come over here, again, you can see that sure enough, that cluster has been added to my list. It's not a WKP cluster. So there's no team workspaces. There's no repository available, but you can see that it's an EKS cluster and you can see the version that you're running. Now, our roadmap includes the ability to do more than just observe these things. And that's something that's coming out in the very next release. You're going to be able to do more than just observe from here. You'll be able to create clusters from within here. You're going to be able to apply policies to those clusters, et cetera, et cetera. But for now, what you can see here is that I just have um, my list of clusters. And already, I have more visibility than I had before. I don't have to go into different kubectl contexts. All of that's handled by WKP for you. So we manage all of the different connection credentials to be able to go and get the observability. In fact, the observability metrics are being pushed from the downstream clusters, from the workload clusters up into the management cluster.
So there's no security concerns there as well. Okay, so multi-cluster control plane is the first step at em empowering the application, um, I'm sorry, the platform engineer into really doing their Kubernetes management and via GitOps doing their Kuber Kubernetes management at scale. So the next thing that I wanna do is I want to now take this cluster, which is a vanilla EKS cluster, and I wanna turn it into a WKP cluster. So WKP, for those of you who maybe looked at it a year ago, WKP clusters, we brought the entire thing. You started with raw infrastructure and we stood up Kubernetes for you. And then we stood up all of the WKP components on top of that, including GitOpsing of the cluster. In case you missed it, a bit earlier, uh, about six months ago, we released a version of WKP that decoupled the creation of a cluster from turning that cluster into a WKP cluster. And that's what I'm demoing for you today. So if you are an enterprise that's already using something like Terraform to manage the basic cluster lifecycle, you can continue to do that. Or if you're using EKS Cuddle, you can continue to do that, but you can still gain the benefits of WKP in the process. So in order to turn this cluster into a WKP cluster, I've already downloaded a CLI called WKP, which is the WKP CLI. And I am going to do a WKP setup run. And what that is gonna do is it's gonna install WKP into this cluster. So you'll see a number of things that are scrolling on the screen here. And it's notice that it's also doing some Git operations. So remember I pointed out that once you have a WKP cluster, that you have a link to a Git repository and we'll see how that happens in just a moment. So now I've just confirmed that indeed I want to turn this cluster into a WKP cluster. So you can see again, there's more things that are getting pushed into Git. Why are things getting pushed into Git? Well, because everything that we do with WKP is GitOps. So managing this cluster now moving forward, once it's got WKP installed, I am managing that cluster using um, GitOps mechanisms. So here at the bottom, you can see that I'm generating Flux Bootstrap manifests, I'm applying Flux. So you're going to see some of these Flux elements get deployed into this cluster. Okay, so it's now reading things from the repository and so on. So let's see what's happening up here. Yep, sure enough, you see that Flux is getting installed here. Um, we are installing the GitOps bootstrapping. And remember that we had the WKP agent is what allowed me to connect it into that cluster. So hopefully in just a moment, this doesn't take too, too long. Ah, so now you can see. So the first thing that I did was I installed Flux and Flux started watching this Git repository that has the entire definition of the WKP cluster. So what were the, some of those other components that you saw running in a WKP cluster? Well, remember I showed them to you earlier. There were observability components like W, like we've scope. There were that there was the Helm controller. So you see Tiller, which is an older version. There, you see a number. You see the workspaces controller. So we're going to use workspaces to partition this cluster into a multi-tenant cluster. So all of those elements got created for you. So uh, let's see, what is this container that's cre getting created? Ah, an external DNS. So let's go ahead and go over here and take a look and refresh my clusters. And um, I, am, I noticed that the Git repository is there. Um, and notice that there is this little widget here that I didn't call out before, but what this widget is, is it's a visualization to show you where you've had Git commits against the repository that's controlling this cluster. So this, oh yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Stacy, for pointing that out. Of course, it's teeny tiny. There we go, that better? Ah, thank you for, for reminding me. So what you can see here is this widget and it's showing me the Git commits. So right here is when I turned this cluster into a WKP cluster, 
all of that initial cluster configuration got committed into the Git repository, and then it got GitOps into the cluster. And now I can view the Git repository for this cluster and not only view it, but in here is the entire definition of that cluster. That's pretty powerful. So if I want to change things, if I want as a platform engineer to change the policies that are governing this, this, uh, this um, cluster, I can do so by applying that right here in the Git repository. So I'm going to go ahead and um, do a port forward and show you this particular cluster. So this one is running at localhost uh, 8002. And there is my EKS cluster that I showed you before that has been turned into a WKP cluster. And sure enough, there's all the components that you saw before. Now, it's not a management cluster, so there's no clusters tab up here. So I can't, I'm not using this particular WKP cluster to manage a whole bunch of other clusters. This is just one of the downstream, one of the leaf clusters. But in here, I do want to show you this notion of workspaces. Now, I'm going to take this particular cluster and I'm going to turn it into a multi tenant cluster by partitioning it into a number of workspaces. Of course, those workspaces on the cluster side are going to have namespaces associated. On their Git repository side, on the GitOps, the Git side of the GitOps equation, we are going to get a separate repository for that workspace. So those are the things that we're going to see get created. So if the Git, if the demo gods continue to smile on me, what we should see now, ah, I have to do a little organization setup. So Forgive me just a moment. This is all um, documented in the uh, WKP docs, but I need to do a little bit of setup here. What I'm doing is I'm setting up, and it looks like it went fine. I'm setting up um, some Git teams so that when I go into the, the creating the workspace, it's gonna be able to set up some team um, policies for me. So these are policies that I've applied over on the Git side. So let me go ahead and refresh this. And again, let's see, no organization set up yet. Um, it's because we're waiting for something to sync because I have um, pushed things up into the Git repository. So let's come back over here and see if anything is updating. So I see things that were updated three minutes ago. Um, Stacy, please do let me know. I hear some background noise behind me. If I should close my door, I can always, it's not too bad. Okay, excellent. Um, so let's see if this has updated. And still nothing. Um, I am gonna close my door while we wait because it's, it may not be distracting you, but it's distracting me. Um, ah, that's better. So please bear with me just a moment. I'm going to make sure that I did everything right here. Um, let's go ahead and go back and see whether that, um, that commit should be showing up in here, which it's not. Let me take a look at my uh, workload, uh, not the workload cluster. I want to take a look at, yes, I'm sorry. I want to take a look at my workload cluster and I want to see whether there's additional commits and those are rather old. Initial cluster configuration. Let me see. Oh, I know exactly why because I didn't actually do the git push yet. So we should be seeing these things getting pushed up into the Git repository. So my mistake. Um, so now you can see that indeed I have a new commit. If I come back over here into this cluster, ah, sure enough, you can see there's the commit that enabled those policies that I was talking about. And now when I go back to my WKP cluster here, if it's already synced, and hopefully it has synced. Sure enough, it's synced. 
So now I'm going to select the organization. This is my Git organization. I'm gonna select a team name, which in this case, I'll let me pick Charlie. And then I'm going to create my Git repository and I'll call this Cornelia's Team Charlie Workspace. Notice, remember that I said that this is gonna create a namespace on the WKP side in, inside of that cluster. So I'm gonna go ahead and create that workspace. Now the workspace is gonna show up here. We have a nice rich you know, client application. So the workspace will show up here in just a moment. Um, and I'll refresh just in case, should be there in just a moment to a little bit of tap dancing. Um, and what is happening behind the scenes now is that that new Git repository is getting created for me. So here we go. I've got my workspace. You can see the namespace that it's associated with. And then you can see here that first of all, it's giving me a status indication, but I can view this in Git. Now, if I go over to that GitHub repository, this is this thing that has just been served to the application team. Okay, that's pretty powerful. So you can imagine putting a self-service interface on top of this that allows a developer to say, hey, I need a new team workspace. Um, you might give them access to the WKP um, commit, uh, console to do that, or you might tool up some other kind of, if you have a portal framework, like a developer portal, you can tool that up. They can self-service request some capacity in this multi-tenant cluster. They will get that capacity and they will get a Git repository where they can now create their applications. So let's finish off um, that whole end-to-end -end life cycle. Let me go ahead and grab my Git URL. I'm gonna come back over to the console and I am going to um, now uh, not move into the workload cluster, but I'm gonna do a git clone of my um, application uh, co uh, console. So what happened here? Um, oh, let me do an, I had uh, done a test earlier. So let me go ahead and delete that. And now I can do a git clone into that. So you can see nothing up my sleeves. Um, and now I'm gonna go into that workspace. And so far you can see that it has nothing beyond the readme. Now, what is it that I'm gonna put in here? Of course, I'm gonna put our beloved pod info application. So I'm gonna copy from the web app directory, everything from web app down into um, this team workspace. Uh, I have to do that recursively, of course. And now you can see here that I have the web app directory. And if I go down into the web app directory, you can see that I have my structure. So now let me do a git um, uh, status to show you what has been added. It's just the web app that's been added. I'll do a git um, add and a git commit, um, adding, add application. And then I'm gonna do a git push. And so what you see here is you see us again, doing all of our operations via git commands. So I've just added my um, work, workload, done a commit and done a push. Of course, I could have done a PR with that. And now let me see uh, whether this application has been deployed. So notice that this here is, um, let's scroll this down a little bit. Uh, this is my workload cluster. So I should be seeing um, that going into the namespace, the namespace is the Team Charlie namespace. Did that get created? Let's have a look. Um, Kubectl get namespaces. 
And there's the team Charlie main space. And so let's just, because it's a little bit cluttered, I'll do a coop cuddle. Ah, there it is, just showed up. So the team Charlie namespace has gotten created and now the application is getting deployed into that. In a moment that should be running. So I'll go ahead and take a look at uh, the services that are in here. Coop cuddle get services in the team Charlie namespace. And I have an IP, I have an ELB for it because I'm running on EKS. And let's see if that has managed to come up yet. Nope, there's gonna be a little bit of a delay. I'll show you that that comes up in just a moment. But in essence, that is the full end-to-end -end demo that I wanted to show you. So to summarize, let me come back over here. What I've shown you is I've shown you the management cluster and how the platform engineer can use the management cluster, which is a WKP cluster with the multi-cluster control plane installed into it to manage a whole set of clusters, single tenant clusters and multi-tenant clusters. We've also used WKP installing it on one of these workload clusters. And we have shown you how the platform engineer can apply policies to segment that multi-tenant cluster into a number of different team workspaces. Those team workspaces then serve up not only capacity on that cluster, but also serve up to the application developer, the very Git repositories that they need to be able to apply GitOps to their application lifecycle. Very similar to the demo that I showed you last time. So for completeness, let's see if it's come up. And there you go. This is where on stage, we'd maybe get a little bit of clapping, right? So the crowd goes wild. So to wrap things up, let me come back over here and show you how you can get started. You can learn more about WKP, which is again, the application that's gonna allow you, your, enable your platform team to do um, Kubernetes and GitOps at scale. So there's a number of resources here. You can go to, again, the weave.works website. Um, you can also take a look at the data sheet and watch demos and those types of things. And of course, if you're interested in any of this, you can certainly contact us on that link as well.